Today is um, Wednesday, October 22nd, and 2008, and we're here at Manchester Creek Community Church at 1689 Spring Scene Road. And I am interviewing Mr. John Lynn, who is 75 years old, was born on July 13, 1933, and he served in the U.S. Army. Yes. And, but during Korean War. Right. And my name is Jennifer Mothersbaugh, and I'm a w student at Winthrop University, and I'm interviewing him today for the Veterans Project. And he is a friend of ours, and I've known him for several years, the last 10 years. And um, I'd like to ask him some questions for the Veterans Project. And, and one of the things I'd like to begin by asking you, when you were drafted, and uh, or did you enlist? You no, I, I was drafted at that time. That's uh, you could, most people were drafted. You know, you could go ahead and join up. Mm -hmm. And those people who joined up were RA, regular army. Those who were drafted had a U.S. Uh, service number. You know, so but I was drafted for two years. Okay. So you served the whole two years. I served the whole two years. Yes. Okay. I was. Uh, I went in in uh, April 16, 1953, and I got out on April 15, 1955. Okay. Okay. And um, where were you living at the time when you were drafted? When I was drafted, I was uh, living in Shalroy, Pennsylvania, about 30 miles south of Pittsburgh. And uh, that's uh, where I was born, and uh, that's where I was living at the time that I was inducted into the service. Okay. Um, so you, you weren't drafted, so obviously. But did you, if you wouldn't have been drafted, would you have joined the military? Probably not. Oh. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Why did you pick the Army as your branch of... Uh, well, they, they, uh, when you're drafted, you can either go into the Marines, if they, it depends on where they needed you. So at that time, they were needing people in the Army. So that's, and the war was still going on in Korea. Mm -hmm. So that's where most people ended up, was in, uh, in, the, in the U.S. Army okay. at that time. Okay. Okay. Well, I understand it anyway, you know. Okay. Um... Do you recall your first days and why you were after you were drafted when you were in oh, the yeah. military? <laughs> I do. I uh, we uh, left. Uh, well, I had a bus from Shawway to Pittsburgh, and then in Pittsburgh we got on a train and went to Fort Meade, Maryland. Mm -hmm. And I remember that, that that was a nighttime train ride, you know. And uh, we got there in the morning, and that when when you hit Fort Meade, Maryland, we got. Uh, off the train and the buses, and then they bust us over to uh, the mess hall to eat. And uh, when we got over there, well, they were just already tearing down the line. And so all we got for that first breakfast in the U.S. Army was an apple and a piece of toast and a cup of coffee. Oh, okay. Which uh, wasn't, very <laughs> wasn't very encouraging to me at that time. Yeah. <laughs> so I like to have a nice meal, but anyway, that's the way that went. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So after we got through at Meade, uh, uh, we were there for um, uh, not very long from what I can remember, and then they uh, took us by bus from there to uh, Fort Lee, Virginia is where, where I ended up anyway, with some others, and uh, that's where I went through my basic training, was in uh, Fort Lee, Virginia. Okay. So. Okay. And um what did it feel like? What did you feel like? Were you homesick? Or? Yeah, you're kind of homesick and lonely, you know, not being away from home before, especially for, you are thinking two years, you know, so uh, it, it was lonely. I, and that's part, of, I think everybody probably is to a degree, you know, so something a little different, mm -hmm. something a little different. Well, did you, did you have to get a haircut? When you oh, yeah. There? Yeah, they gave us a haircut. Mm -hmm. We did that at, uh, uh, well, let's see, at, at Fort Meade, Maryland, I think we got the haircuts and we got the, um, um, uh, the our equipment, you know, our, our Army uh, uniforms and things of that sort, fatigues, mm -hmm. shoes and things, shoes, socks, and, and your underwear and all that, you know, and a duffel bag to put it in, and, uh, 
and uh, we, we got the haircut too. And it was easy, you know, all I do is go in there and just shave your hair back. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you have a lot of hair? <laughs> no, I didn't have a whole lot, but there, people had probably had more than I had, but even then, it, uh, you know, uh, yeah. it just, uh, they, just, they just kind of skid you with a water boiled down. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, did, did, did you, so obviously you went to boot camp? Did yeah, you? from there I went to Fort Lee, Virginia, and that's where we went through right, basic training Okay. In Fort you, Lee. Well, could you tell me a little bit about that experience? What was that like, the boot camp experience? Well, you know, it's uh, one thing when you're in the service is that you're always meeting, you're in different places, you know, you don't know anybody. And uh, so it's uh, it's a time of uh, to where you just kind of kind of feel your weight, you know, through through things like that. And uh, so uh, uh, it's a little different, you know. You get up early in the morning, and they wake you up rather. And, uh, you go to each aisle, and then after you get through with that, well, then we walk the field, and or uh, we'd be going or marching, you know, and things of that sort. Uh, and go out on the rifle ranges and uh, shoot your weapons, you know, your M1 is what we were using at that time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I can remember we were we were going through uh, the thing as, as far as firing a rifle, and I can remember uh, being out on the range there, and, and uh, whoever got the best uh, uh, number of bullseyes, you know, was going to get a three-day pass. Uh -huh. And so I was shooting at this target, and after, after I got about several shots off, I realized I was shooting at the wrong one. Oh. And so I started shooting at the target I was supposed to be shooting at. And the guy next to me got a three-day pass. So I was just wondering if some of them shots that I, I took at his bullseye maybe caused him to do that. But I, I don't know. But uh, that was something that just came. I thought about that a lot. A lot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, did, did you have any experience with Miller, um like, with guns? No, no, I, I didn't, I didn't, it was not where, you know, my dad uh, died when I was nine. We never had a rifle or, or a pistol or anything around the house. I mean, I was just, uh, now he used to hunt and all from what I can remember, but there, there may have been a house, there might have been a vehicle, I mean, a, 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 either a shotgun or a rifle there at the house, but it, uh, I don't remember ever seeing it. Uh -huh. But I, I know that he had gone hunting a, a couple of times. Um, so, so. Yeah. It was a new experience. Yeah, it was a new experience to me. I wasn't familiar with that whatsoever. But, um, mm -hmm. And I'm sure a lot of other ones are probably the same way, you know, that, uh, that were there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, do you remember any of your instructors during that time? Or? Yeah, I'm very, I, I remember a couple of them. We had a black sergeant who was about, probably about 6'2", and was probably weighed about 220 or something like that, 210. And, uh, but uh, he was uh, very uh, professional, you know, very uh, disciplined, mm -hmm. and uh, he he was the one that would uh, teach us how to march, you know, and the cadence calls and all that stuff. And, I, uh, and of course, we had our um, our first sergeant over our company uh, that I was uh, I was in, and uh, I can remember some things about him. I mean, he was a nice guy, and, you know. But uh, I think he was from New Jersey, I believe originally so yeah you, you run into different people you know while you're there and I, later on when I was uh, I was uh, going to um, uh, Columbia South Carolina to uh, Fort Jackson uh, I ran into my platoon sergeant down there they had in the process of closing some things down at Fort Lee and he was on his way down into some uh, place in Georgia I think to another, another uh, camp down there I oh. guess he was going to be doing mm -hmm. some more training down in that area. I don't know. Uh, I thought that was kind of ironic. Uh, we ended up the same place at the same time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. yeah, for a few days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how how did you get through boot camp? Did you was it a hard for you to get through boot camp and uh, the new experiences of with the machine guns? No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't have any uh, any problems get through it myself. I, uh, I don't know anybody that did, the people I was with. I do know that whenever we, uh, uh, maybe, uh, I don't remember just exactly whether it was after the first eight weeks or maybe the second eight weeks that I was in basic training, 
where there was two companies of us going together, you know, mm -hmm. at the same time, two different companies. And uh, I don't remember what our company's name was or theirs, but I remember that just about everybody in that company ended up going to Korea. And uh, and the company that I was in, some of us, I was one of the fortunate ones that stayed in the States, mm -hmm. and the rest of them went. Mm -hmm. But that one company where every one of them was going to Korea, they had a riot at that time. And, uh, they were tearing the plumbing out, and breaking windows, and tearing up beds. I mean, they were really, I don't know why, I mean, you know, I don't know why they got that upset for some reason or other, I don't know, but they had the, they had the uh, MPs out there, you know, and quelled everything down, and settled everything down, but uh, I never did understand just what that was all about. Uh, uh -huh. So, but uh, anyway, that that's what happened where I was at. Mm -hmm. Now, the company I was going through, there wasn't any problems whatsoever like that, so I don't, I don't know what set them off. I, mm. it, it was, I guess just the idea of going to Korea, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, anyway. Okay. So. Well, um, so you served in the Korean, during Korean War time. Yeah, right. In the Korean War, you know, they had an armistice about August or somewhere around in there where the fighting had dropped off. You know, I mean, it wasn't, uh, wasn't any fighting hardly at all at that time, so. Uh, that made me feel kind of, you know, nice about the whole thing because I, but you never know when it was going to start back up again, you know, and that's, yeah. that's what we were, we were going, or at least I was going through in my mind, you know, that uh, I hope it stays like that so that we didn't have to go over there and, uh, and carry on, uh, you know, protecting our country at the time, so, mm -hmm. and, that, and it did, uh, it, it, it did stop, so, anyway. Did you find yourself during that time when um, the war was going on, were you reading the newspapers quite a bit? And, we didn't get any newspapers where I was at. Mm -hmm. I, and I didn't see anybody buy any. I mean, you know, I don't even know that they were available. I guess they were, but we didn't have any newspapers or anything to read. I don't mm -hmm. even remember television, you know. I don't remember people sitting around watching TV where I was at. We were. We stayed basically in our barracks, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and we were always shining shoes or cleaning our weapons or something all the time, you know. And mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't, we didn't, we didn't have any kind of an outreach to the world as to what was going on as far as having papers and, and things mm -hmm. of that sort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you said you went to, you were in stationed in Pennsylvania and then went over to. I lived in Pennsylvania, and where they sent us to Fort Meade, Maryland, and then down I was stationed at Fort Lee, Virginia, for my okay. for my basic training. Okay. Is what, what, what what that was all about, yeah. Okay. And do you remember when you arrived in Fort um, Fort Lee, um, Virginia? I just remember we went down there by bus. I remember that. And while we were going down there, there's always somebody had a. This guy had a mouth organ, you know, and so we started singing songs that he would play on the mouth organ while we were going down there. Oh, okay. I do remember that. I mean, there's always somebody around for some reason or other that has some you know, harmonica or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> oh, so you did this a guy, lot of singing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, you know, and so it's, uh, I remember us going through Richmond mm -hmm. on our way down there. And uh, so, anyway, that's, that's the way that thing was. <laughs> was that was that your first time out of Pennsylvania, or did yeah, you had you traveled? Yeah, uh, basically, well, you know, I can remember uh, us traveling down to Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. before I went into service. You know, to see some cousins I had down there, and they asked us to come down for the cherry blossom time, which is around the first of April. Mm -hmm. So we went down there and spent a few days before I uh, we went back to Charleroi, and then, and then when I went down to Pittsburgh to be in, you know sworn in and all that stuff. And, uh, uh -huh. Yeah, it's for, like, to really get away from home, you know. Yeah, oh, that, okay. that, that was the first time. Very length of time. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Okay. It yeah. always amazed me how in, in the service you could be in one place in one day and the next day you'd be always, you know, you'd, you'd be somewhere else, all together a different place and everything. I mean, that's just the way it is because you're moving around from place to place and everywhere you go, it's a little bit different, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. things of that sort, so, yeah, <laughs> travel. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, um, what was your job assignment 
when you learned? When I went through basic training, my first eight weeks was uh, infantry training. Okay. My second eight weeks was in uh, quartermaster. You know, and of course we, I worked in the supply room eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and uh, so uh, that that's what my MOS was was, was supply. Okay. And uh, so and that and that's what they taught you there at, at, as a quartermaster uh, base, really. You know, they teach you eight weeks of basic training, and then you would go into training uh, uh, for. Uh, Quartermaster, okay. you know, okay. yeah, you know, supply rooms and stuff like that. You know, it, what you're doing is, you know, handing out. When you're in the supply room, you know, you handle you handle canteen covers, and canteens, and all the equipment. You know, that you have in a company is what, where I was at. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Did you did you see? Well, obviously, since you didn't go to Korea, you, did you see any combat? Or, no, no, I didn't see any combat whatsoever. Okay. Uh, okay. I used to think about it, though. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. when you know, when you when you're in the military and you think about you're going into combat, you wonder how you're going to react. Mm -hmm. You know, you you don't ever know because you don't know what the situation is or things of that sort. So mm -hmm. it's uh, I thought about it. You know, like if we if we were in a situation where we had to retreat, you know, would I or, or would you retreat? Hopefully, in order, you know. Mm -hmm. Or if you were required to stay there and you look like you're going to get overrun, whether you're going to pick up and run or you're going to stay there and get maybe get killed or you know who knows or captured. So mm -hmm. that used to go through my mind at times. I just I wonder how I would react under those situations, but uh, never happened. Thank 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 the Lord, you know. But uh, mm -hmm. but I did. I, I thought about situations like that. It might come up, you know. And, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, um, were there many casualties t to your unit? I mean, did anybody in your in your unit when you first started did they go on to Korea? Was there? Do you know of any? I was casualties? going to school with a guy in my senior. And, uh, he was a senior, and I was I was a junior. I think, and mm -hmm. he was a senior. And uh, when he graduated, he went into service, and he was one of the. Well, he, he was killed over there. I, I remember that. And, uh, of course, that was more or less like at, at the beginning of the, of the war, mm -hmm. probably in 49 or something like that. And, uh, and he was one of the first troops in there. Mm -hmm. So you know how that is. I mean, you, you're trying to have a holding action, and, and you're just doing the best you can with what you've got. And I, I don't know how what happened. But anyway, he was, he was killed in action over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think about that at times. Uh, when I was in basic training, we did have one guy that was uh, injured, and I don't know how it came about. Uh, we were out in the field, and we were going through a field problem out there. And uh, the way I understand it is that he uh, had a, uh, a smoke bomb or something, and he was uh, getting ready to throw, and it misfired or had a uh, something go wrong, and it blew up in his hand, and it burned his hand. Mm -hmm. And they took him to the hospital, or you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember that happening to him. And uh, I don't think it was real serious, but it was one of them things that just happened. And I, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, tell me about a couple of your most uh, memorial experiences with, that you've had memorable experiences with um, when you were in. Um, you know, the whole time, the two years that you were in. Right, uh -uh. yeah. The Army. Well, I, I can remember when I was first, I went to, uh, when I was at Bragg, uh, I know that uh, the first time that I got there, I was assigned to the 82nd Airborne Division, and they were out in the field. My company that I was assigned to was out in the field, so mm -hmm. I just hit, hit the base. Uh, they took me over to... Uh, Headquarters Company, 3rd Battalion, and 325 uh, Airborne Infantry Regiment. And uh, they, uh, they turned me over to a guy that uh, was in the uh, supply room. And uh, he took me by the supply room, and they got me some field equipment and everything, poncho and a tent and things like that, and uh, a knapsack and uh, cartridge belts. And uh, I think I'm, I don't, they may have given me a weapon, but I don't remember that. But I, 
probably did. And I and we went out in the field. I mean, that's where they were at. We spent a lot of time out in the field whenever I was with them. Because mm -hmm. we were assigned to go anywhere in the world in 24 hours. And so we were uh, we were always uh, out of the field, you know, preparing ourselves for any kind of a situation that we might run into, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that was that was one of the things I can remember. And I can remember when before I became uh, in the, went to the um, to the supply room, which was my MOS. When I first got there, they didn't have an opening there, so they put me in a communications platoon because before I went into service, I was uh, climbing poles for West Penn Power Company, working on power lines and things like that. And they said, "Well, we'll put you in communication." And I would climb up trees, you know, we'd put this, string this wire for our communications people. And um, so I, uh, when, when I was going through that, uh, uh, I, uh, but like I said before, uh, a little later on, I, I was going to communications school, which they were teaching us Morse code. And I remember when I was going through that school, and I, uh, there was uh, an accident there at Fort Bragg where uh, they were jumping, you know, and uh, when they were uh, in this particular time that they were uh, uh, they were out, at, uh, you know, uh, on their planes, it, we had the C-119. And the C-119, there was uh, whenever we they would load these planes up, probably about 20 men to a plane, 10 to 10 man sticks or maybe 12 man stick, uh, probably 24 maybe, and uh, you could go out both sides of the, of the plane, and uh, they would. Uh, they would have a formation of V's. They'd have one out front, and you'd have one on each side. And uh, this is the way they would come over the drop zone, and these guys would jump out of the plane. Well, one of those planes, for some reason or another, whenever that uh, they uh, cut back, they usually cut back on uh, on uh, how fast they were going. You could hear the engines kind of throttle back a little bit, and they lost control. One of them lost control and went back, and, went, and, and they and they crashed. But on the way down, they took a bunch of them with them. You know, they'd already jumped before. Mm -hmm. Went down through some of those guys. Some of them didn't get out of the plane uh, when it was falling, and uh, there was some number of them got killed in that, in that at that time. Oh. It's kind of, but those things happen. You know, that's the military. You never know mm -hmm. something can go wrong, and uh, that's that's just the way it is. And mm -hmm. I thought about that and was, at times, but. Uh, yeah, when they had another plane that uh, that uh, was they call a smoke bomb hill at there at Fort Bragg, and they used to have the old uh, atomic cannon. It was a long cannon. They kept it there you know, in that area, mm -hmm. but one of those C-119s came down in a um, in a mess hall over there. But thank mm -hmm. goodness there wasn't anybody eating at the time. It did kill a couple cooks there. Oh. And it crashed over there for some reason or other, a malfunction or something, I guess. And, mm -hmm. And that happens. But uh, there again, you know, those things happen whether you like yeah. it or not. And yeah. So. That sounds. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Were you awarded any medals or citations? No. I, I had a good conduct medal they gave me when I when I was you know well, when I was uh, left you know. Mhm. Mm that was it. Mm -hmm. So, the, so you were in the 82nd right. Airborne, and so that meant you were a paratrooper. You would not when I first went in, you know, because no. uh, I was uh, I was U.S. You know, I was I was mm -hmm. uh, inducted into service, and, and uh, I what I didn't volunteer, and so mm -hmm. uh, when I went in there, about it's probably about October, November of that year, they were asking people if they wanted. to those who didn't jump, they want to go through jump school. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I'll go ahead and go through jump school. So I, and that was, uh, I went through jump school at Fort Benning, Georgia in uh, January of 1954. Mm -hmm. Three week training is what it is. Mm -hmm. First week you go through PLFs and things of that sort. Uh, let's see, second week we went with the 250 towers where they would lift you up in these towers and drop you in. And uh, and then the third week you'd have jumps. We had five five jumps to qualify. Okay. And while we were there, uh, the plane that I was on, 
Now, when I, I talked to other people, and they said they never did do this at the other places that they, they, uh, uh, that they said, uh, they would ask us, are you sure you want to be follow through on this? Mm -hmm. Well, we were on our fifth jump. And that, you know, once you put the fifth, you get your wings, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And we had a guy back out on the fifth jump. I oh. said, man, I can't believe it. They'd go through this, you know, because it was almost hell going through jump school, because they stayed on you all the time. Yeah, yeah. In fact, when you went out, that first jump was the easiest one, because you were trained to the point that you you just did it automatically, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then after the first jump, you had the second, and said, well, I know what that one was like. I wonder what this is going to be like, you know, and then the next one or whatever. I made 12 all the time when I was in there. Oh, you made 12 so, completely? Yeah, I my five, you know, it's seven after I got back to Fort Bragg. Oh, okay. But that's what we would do, you know. We would have a field problem, we'd, we'd be dropped into a drop zone up there, and, and we'd, uh, we'd, uh, uh, we'd look, when we were coming down, we'd look for the orange smoke or red smoke, whichever one was designated to your to your platoon or whatever you were jumping with, and mm -hmm. as we were coming down, we looked for that smoke. You know, and when we mm -hmm. landed, while well, we would head in that direction, oh. is what we would do. You know, and then we'd have our field problem for a few days, and and then we'd come back back into the to the base. You mm -hmm. know, this was out in, in, in the country there, at Fort Bragg. Mm -hmm. Pretty big place out there, and they have about three or four drop zones out there in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, 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 what was it like for your first jump? Were you scared? <laughs> no, that's why, that was the easiest one. Because you were oh. trained to the point uh -huh. where you just do everything automatic, you know. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then the second one, well, then you may have a little more hesitation, you know. I, people would get sick, you know, we'd be on, on a plane. I didn't throw up, but I felt like a lot. There was times when I wanted to get out of that thing. <laughs> I, I did, you know, because mm -hmm. it was kind of bumpy, you know, you know how that is, weather conditions yeah. and all. and. Uh, some of them were smooth, you know, some of them were kind of bumpy and had people throw up, you know, and they had these little bags you could take and so uh -huh. you could just throw up in them and, and that. So, uh, but uh, each one's a little bit different, it mm -hmm. seems to be. Some I was completely um, at ease with. There was others I was kind of happy, you know, uh, I was uh, kind of leery about, you know, I don't know whether I want to go through with this or not, you know, I mean, it, more psychologically, I guess, than anything else. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, if, if everyone's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And you say you got one, you got a medal for good conduct? Yeah, that was, yeah. And you? Yeah. This, that was it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, um, how did you stay in touch with your family during that time? Or Bo Mostly, uh, well, when I was at Fort uh, Lee, Virginia, we had telephone banks there, you know, they had a place that had a lot of telephones there. You could go and call home, reverse the charges at that time, you know, and they would, mm -hmm. your people back home would, uh, and then when I got into, uh, uh, to Fort Bragg, I usually wrote home, you know, mm -hmm. I know my mother used to get on me all the time, <laughs> not right enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she was right, you know, I probably should have, you know how you are, that when you're that age you don't think too much about it. Yeah. You're kind of homesick like in a way, but there's always something else going on and all. So, and, so that, that's basically would would write write letters home. And mm -hmm. occasionally we'd get some too, so mm -hmm. not as much as I probably would like to have, but I mean that's that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. So you say so you say your father died at when you were nine, yeah. so you just had your mother and... I had two brothers, younger they, than me. I was the oldest. So they were at home? They were at home, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, what was the food like for you? Um, it was you, pretty good most of the time. I I, uh, I remember our second eight, eight weeks of basic training, uh, it was a quartermaster, say, so and we're talking about... And they had some people that were trained to be cooks and all. <laughs> in our second eight weeks, they came into our mess hall, you know, and boy, they really did a good job of preparing the food and and all that, you know, and had plenty to eat. And it was it was really a, a, a real nice time at that time. Uh, mm -hmm. The rest of it, eh, it was okay. Uh, we had what we call sea ration once a week when I was at Fort Bragg. Uh -huh. and that's when they got all the old sea rations, and they would open up these cans and they would dump them all in one big pot. Oh. <laughs> and warm it up, you know, to where it was uh, warm, and and that's what you would have one meal out of the week, you know, uh -huh. and uh, which wasn't too good, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Didn't sound like it would be. These days, you know, these days were back in '44 and things like that. They didn't have, they have a can on, you know, the the, uh, the the date on the can, mm -hmm. the year anyway, from what I can remember. 
whatever, and all you do is open them cans up and dump them in a big pot and warm it up. Wow. <laughs> of course, when we were out in the field, they would, we would have those sea ration cans, those sea rations out there. Mm -hmm. So that's what we usually had out in the field with that. And sometimes we'd have a hot meal, you know. At the uh -huh. time, we'd have hot meals. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, um, did you have plenty of supplies at all times while you were yeah. in the military? Yeah, that, that we, we were pretty well uh, in, in, that, in that respect. I, I do remember in, in the motor pool, though, they had some problems with parts and stuff like that at times. But uh, mm -hmm. in that case, you know, they would have a, a vehicle that might break down or something. They'd take parts off of that to, for the others until the parts would come in. But uh, mm -hmm. normally everything, they, they, had, they had the equipment that they needed to do whatever they needed to do. Okay. So. Okay. And then, um, did you feel pressure or stress at any time when you were no. in the Army? I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't. There might have been other people that might have had problems with uh, uh, what would be the platoon, you know, sergeant mm -hmm. or something like that, but I didn't. I didn't have any problems in that, or in that, in that way, uh -huh. personally. Okay. Um, was there, say for instance, you were jumping in the um, plane, out of the plane, in the, you know, for the paratrooping school, did you do anything for good luck or anything like that, or did you believe in that, or? or <laughs> well, I'm a Christian, you know, and I can remember, so, well, Lord, here we go again. I just hope you're going to look out after me, you know, because, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and you're dependent on that parachute, you know, to open and everything go well. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember seeing anybody that ever didn't open, you know, to where mm -hmm. they were fatally wounded, or fatal, uh, any fatalities. Mm -hmm. Any times I ever watched them when we were jumping, you know. And uh, I know we came close to it one time where I had jumped out, the guy come in behind me, and he got his foot caught in my uh, in my uh, riser, you know. Well, you know, in that case, if if he if, he, if he kicked free, mm -hmm. uh, it could have happened to where my chute would collapse. Mm -hmm. And usually if he's above me and my chute collapses, his chute may collapse too. Oh. So we, you know, so I, 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 uh, I was, that was the only, that was the closest thing I had to anything happen to be. Mm -hmm. But I have seen them where they would drop a pretty good way before that chute would finally pop too. Wow. Not very many, but occasionally you would see one that would drop further than most of them before they opened up. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't see any fatalities or anything like that. We did have a we did have a truck one time, you know, they had the uh, heavy equipment drops that they would bring in after we got on the ground, you know, and I remember one of them had a three-quarter ton truck on it. They had these huge parachutes, there's three of them, when they come out of the back of that plane, you know, and all three of them opened up. Well, only two of them opened up oh. and hit pretty hard. And, mm -hmm. and that, that, that vehicle hit the ground. Of course, it's on a skid too, and uh, it had it. And it, uh, it was it was um, loaded with sea rations, oh. you know, boxes of sea rations. Mm -hmm. And that thing overturned, and there was sea rations all over the place, boxes there. And we went out there and start picking through that stuff, getting the good stuff. Out. <laughs> 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 <That's awesome. laughs> yeah. Well, um, did you? entertain yourself a lot did you or did you do, like you said you had harmonicas and things like that yeah, was there any well other that was of? that was when we were at one time but no when we were at the you know in the barracks and all there wasn't much entertainment of that sort going on at all mm -hmm. uh, and any time i was in anywhere else at fort lee or fort bragg mm -hmm. it just wasn't uh, nothing like that point we could go to the show you know we could take in a show somewhere and they had the one, what we called a one, two, three club, where you could go and have some beer. Well, it was supposed to be watered down, you know, and snacks and watch TV. We had a, and you they have a pool room, you know, and uh, they have mm -hmm. magazines and maybe newspapers in there to read. This was at Fort Bragg, and, okay. and you know, day room they called it, uh -huh. the day room for that. They had, they had a pool, pool table, and some a TV and some magazine and stuff like that you could read. Okay. That was that was about it though. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And um 
Um, what did you do when you went on leave, or did you ever? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. What was well, you? usually I would I would go home, you know, and, and stay there for a couple a week or whatever it might be. Uh -huh. I know one time I went and uh, and, and I, I got a ride up there with some people who were on leave too at the same time. Uh, but coming back, I hitchhiked back. And that's, oh. and, uh, but and I was uh, that, that that's. You know, people back then would pick up a, a soldier, you know, or a sailor or something like that. Mm -hmm. Don't know that that would happen today. Probably don't need to, but uh, yeah. And uh, but uh, which took a pretty good while, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, but anyway, you depend on somebody else for a ride, so mm -hmm. it took a pretty good, pretty good time for me to get back. I think I left that up the shore where I left there probably around 12 noon, and I got a, I got a ride from. Uh, from there, the guy was going somewhere down here in, in Virginia or somewhere in North Carolina, and he dropped me off, and then and then I got another ride from there to Fort Bragg, and then I, I did some walking and, and from Fort, from Fayetteville, and that dropped me off in Fayetteville, and I had to do some walking there and hitchhike, and I finally got a ride onto the base. Okay. It's, uh, you know, it's, it, it was, probably took about, I don't know, well, see, I got there that next morning by eight o'clock or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so it's pretty good, oh, okay. pretty good amount of time. But that's uh, the way it goes. Okay. Yeah. So you just traveled to Maryland and North Carolina and Georgia when you were in the um, yeah. service. Did you travel anywhere else or, no. or go out west or? No. Basically in the south and east. Right. Southeast. Spent most of my time at Fort Bragg. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, is was there anything hum humorous or unusual yeah. that happened? <laughs> I uh, I remember our, my in, while I was at Fort Bragg, uh, in, in the headquarters company third battalion had a guy come in our barracks there one evening, and uh, he would hypnotize. He, could, he said he could hypnotize people. Well, he hypnotized this black guy that was there. And he was, he had him climbing up into the rafter-like parts of it. It was two stories, you know, we were mm -hmm. on the bottom. And uh, he was climbing up in the, in the wood, you know, uh, rafters and all of that. Guy. I thought he was going to die because he was, he was under a lot of, a lot of stress, I would thought. Mm -hmm. Climbing around like that, you know, I mean, I, it, it, it would kind of be hard to do, I think. But, but uh, anyway, everything, he, he came, he brought him back down there and snapped his fingers and he come right out of it and so oh. and he didn't remember any of that either so I, you know you kind of wonder about that but yeah <laughs> so that was that was kind of I don't know I, I, I thought I thought it was a little over over the board overboard you know how to do stuff like that and, mm -hmm. but I thought it was uh, kind of strenuous you know and everything but uh, I guess you could call it humorous too, because a lot of guys are laughing and everything about what, what was going on. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you ever pull any pranks while you were in the military, or did anybody else pull pranks well, that you know of? Or um? the only prank that I could remember somebody doing uh, was at Fort uh, Lee, Virginia. When we no, it was Fort Fort uh, Fort Meade, Maryland, where mm -hmm. we first went in. And there was, you know, the barracks were lined up, so we were in our barracks. And um, this one guy that was in our in our barracks, he had a whistle. He got a old whistle somewhere, and he went next door, and uh, he blew the whistle. He said, "All right, everybody, fall out!" Mm -hmm. And so all these guys started falling out, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> And, and you know they weren't even supposed to, so he <laughs> he kind of pulled a prank on them, you know. Uh -huh. I thought that was kind of humorous, you know, what mm -hmm. what he did. He did. So he got people in there to do stuff like that. I mean, they just seemed to be born that way or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, just something. I never will forget his name it was Pino Migliori, I think, and he was from Denora, Pennsylvania, of course, up from Charlotte, which is probably about seven miles away, you know. The, and it, for some reason or other, I don't know why why he did that. But he seemed to think it would be a great, you know, be be, uh, be something that that, uh, that he wanted to do for some reason. <laughs> yeah. well, do you have any uh, 
have any photographs of um, of yeah. that milk? Yeah, I have some here. This here was taken at uh, Fort Lee, Virginia. This is when we were going through our first eight weeks of basic training. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one there is at Fort Lee, Virginia, too. And, of course, this here is with uh, my barracks there at, uh, at Fort uh, Bragg. And this is the Pope Air Force Base uh, there at Fort Bragg where they were, had the planes lined up and we were getting ready to, uh, to uh, board them. Mm -hmm. And there, this here is uh, another one where uh, I'm suited up here with a parachute and everything and a GP bag and uh, getting ready to uh, to board one of these planes. And this is where we're marching on to the fort, uh, you know, uh, at, the, um, at Pope Air Force Base. We were, we we're just marching over there in order to get to board up on these planes and okay. put our chutes in there. This is C-119 that I was telling you about. Oh, okay. And this here was taken during Operation Flashburn, and that we had that in 1954, I think. Uh -huh. And we had to dig everything in. It was, it was, we went out there with, uh, and uh, it was, you know, simulating one, uh, an atomic bomb or something like that. Uh -huh. And we had to dig in, foxholes had to go down under, underground, and, and uh, our, all of our uh, equipment and everything, we had uh, people there with bulldozers and everything and digging holes in the ground to bury, you know, to get these uh, vehicles down underground more or less. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't nothing on top, but they were, they were below ground level, you know, mm -hmm. at that time. And so this was taken, this is another one here that's uh, showing me, and this one here. This is a friend of mine that uh, took the pictures Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I guess I took that picture of him, mm -hmm. and this is him, and uh, this is myself, and we're digging in on that. That's what we're doing there, is digging foxholes and all. Okay. And this here is a um, friend of ours. That was somebody who was in the service with me, and uh, this is myself back at that time. This is the two guys. We were together, and we had a, a bazooka that we were using at that time mm -hmm. against tanks because we had. A, we had, uh, I don't know how many tanks that they had come in from uh, from some tank unit out to, to, I think it was in Texas or something, that they, they brought these guys in. And they were, they were the, we were the good guys and they were the bad guys. They were uh -huh. the aggressors. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what this was all about. And this is me digging a foxhole here too, so. Okay. Was, uh, this was taken out in the field. This somebody else that was there, this another guy. And this was, he just laying under a poncho and everything and our air mattress that we slept on. So, okay. Okay. Anyway. And these yeah. are your pa uh, parachute book over? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this here, is, they gave us this whenever we uh, entered in at the uh, service up at Fort Meade, Maryland. They start giving us our uh, um, uh, uniforms and things like that. And they gave us this book here, The Soldier's Guide. Mm -hmm. You know, and it tells us about being soldiering and everything. And this is our personal conduct for the soldier, mm -hmm. uh, which has the way we're supposed to, you know, uh, conduct ourselves when we're with other people and groups and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. we're always supposed to be, uh, you know, all above reproach and all that and doing doing things right and proper like, like a good soldier should. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as the U.S. Army, you know, because we're... we're we're, we're there, you know, as, as people who belong to the, to the U.S. military, and we, we should conduct ourselves in a proper manner and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and this, okay. is our, this is my jump log here that I had, and it's uh, got the first five jumps. I didn't put any more in after that. Okay. Uh, I had 12, I, like I told you, and this is where the lieutenant had to sign each one, saying that I did make that jump and all. Okay. So, uh, this one here shows me that uh, on 12154 we had two jumps, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Uh, on 12354 um, we had two jumps, and uh, and then on 126 we had the fifth jump. Mm -hmm. And the stick position on the first one I was in the fifth one in the stick, and the second one I was the sixth man in the stick. You know, twelve of us on. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the third one, I was the ninth one in the stick, and then the fourth and fifth, I was the last one. 
Oh, okay. So, okay. Anyway, I was the last one out the door. Oh, okay. <laughs> I often wonder what these guys thought about, you know, because they, they take you up there. I'm talking about the, the pilot, the co-pilot, and they used to have a, 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 an Air Force guy there in the back of the plane with us, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're the only ones left after we leave that plane. You know? So I oh, wonder how they felt about that. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> One minute they got 24, 26 guys in there, and the next minute there's nobody there. You know? Yeah, just them. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. headed back to where where they came from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, um, what did you think of your fellow soldiers? Do you still carry on a? But yeah, I, I keep, uh, I, there's about five of them that I, I keep in contact. One of them just passed away this last summer. And uh, one, they were from Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota area. I had one, uh, another one that's, uh, was from up in Wisconsin, two of them from up in Wisconsin. Uh, one of them was Phil Canoke, and uh, he stayed in, the, he got out of service, uh, and then he went to work at CIA. And he was, oh. he operated a plane over in, um, over in, uh, uh, in Vietnam during oh. during the Vietnam War, okay. and, uh, so uh, and he died too here a while back. And uh, and I got another fellow that uh, one one stayed in, and he was in the Green Berets, and he was uh, he uh, spent thirty years in, and he was uh, he was over at uh, I don't know how many tours he spent over there in Vietnam. And I had uh, one guy that uh, still down in Charleston, South Carolina, was in the service with one in Lexington, North Carolina, that I was in the service with, and uh, another one up in Delaware. I mean, we we keep up on the telephone more or less now more than anything mm -hmm. else. So, did, did did you keep a personal diary during no. that time? No. I didn't keep a personal diary, but I wrote letters to my wife. You know, mm -hmm. you know. We met in uh, probably August of uh, 54, and we got married in November, mm -hmm. and she wrote letters to me, and I wrote letters to her, mm -hmm. and I kept her letters. No, I didn't keep hers. She kept mine. I didn't keep hers. Uh -huh. I kind of wish maybe I should have at the time, right now, uh -huh. but I did keep, uh, we did keep mine, uh -huh. and I got married to her. I'll take them out and read them occasionally and just see. You know what day I wrote it and what was going on at that time, because I'd tell her what, what I was doing and all that stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that way, I've got a diary in that area, but I, I didn't sit down and just write a, a mm -hmm. diary while I was there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, when you, after your time ended, the two years ended, was the the Korean War was it over by then or? Well, they, they had a, a, a armistice, and they never wasn't. There was a little bit of, little bit of fighting in between, you know, but mm -hmm. not much. And, and uh, one thing I always, when I was getting ready to get discharged, I was always afraid it was going to start back up again. Oh yeah. So whenever I was getting ready, to, you know, going, well, I was bustering out, you know, and I remember going over to uh, have my teeth uh, looked at, you know, and they said, well, he said, we got some problems here, you know. And he said, but i tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to go ahead and you got 90 days after you get out, you can go ahead and, and get in touch with the personnel, you know, that, uh, after you get out. And, they, and uh, they'll go ahead and set you up where you can get it done outside outside the service. And I said, well, that suits me fine because I don't want to stick around any longer. I want to. And I have to. Mm -hmm. I was afraid you might, something might hit you or something like that. Well, we're going to have to keep you a couple of days or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you get kind of antsy about it, you know, because you really want to get on and leave. I know one guy that I was in the service with, uh, P uh, Big Viore, that one fellow I was telling you about, well, we used to go out and watch people, uh, you know, they would uh, get guys out of, the, out of jail, you know, guys that are in the barrack, in the brig, you know, and you'd go out with a guy with about five people, five of them, and you had a shotgun. But when you had that shotgun, it was always on safety, and you didn't have anything in the chamber. You know, mm -hmm. you had to, you had to load one in the chamber, take the safety off, and uh, before you could even use it. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, somebody escaped from him. Oh. You know, one of those guys took off, and uh, and he got away. And so when that happened, he had to spend six more months in the military for that oh. infraction. 
and I thought it was kind of out of control because it, if you're holding, if you're watching five people and they all charge you at the same time, you have got a chance. I mean, it, it, you just can't load that weapon up and shoot it. Not that I want to kill anybody anyway. Mm -hmm. And I, I was, you know, you kind of get leery about whether uh, something's going to hold you up while you're while you're in the process of being discharged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway. From that. So, what what um, state were you in Fort Bragg when you were yeah, discharged? Yeah, I, I was discharged from Fort Bragg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was a guy that uh, from up around my hometown that was discharged at the same the time that I was, and and we came home together. I had my car at the at Fort Bragg at the time, and uh, and we we uh, we left there and went back up to Pennsylvania at that time. What did what did you do in the days afterwards after you were discharged? What well, when I uh, I had a job before I was discharged, and so um, I was had a job over here at the bleachery waiting on me. You know, when I got out, and I told him, I said, "Well, I'm gonna get out on the 16th, but I'd like to go home, you know, for a week or ten days, and you know, and, and visit before I come back to Rock Hill, where I'm, and mm -hmm. uh, where my wife is from, you know, and uh, uh, and before I went to work, and so they." They, they said that would be okay, so that's, that's what I did. For about a week and a About two. ten days, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you started at the bleacher? bleacher. yeah. Okay. Right. And um, did you uh, did you go to college or? I went to college on GI Bill uh, oh, okay. for, for about, well, going part-time and everything. Mm -hmm. Two years is what I had, business college. Okay. Yeah. Business college? Yeah. Okay. Right. And then what did you do? So you worked at the bleach tree? Then I went, uh, yeah, I worked the bleach tree, and then after the bleach tree, I worked, I worked one year at the bleach tree from 55 to 56. Then I quit there, and I went back up to Pennsylvania, and I worked up there for nine months uh, as a carpenter. Mm -hmm. And then my wife uh, was with me, and then she got a job back in Rock Hill at the uh, Arrigan plant, uh, at a job making pretty good money as a draw-in hand. It paid, paid well. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so then after I, uh, I, when I was up there, you know, it was like carpenter work, well, wintertime, you know, it was starting to snow and all that stuff, and I was thinking they were going to lay me off, but they never did, so I had, finally had to quit, probably about October, and I came back to Rock Hill, and then I was, uh, finally got a job there at the Arrogan Mill, where my wife worked, and uh, in 1957, uh, in September, I went to work at the post office. I got on the post office, so I, I, I stayed there for 38 and a half years as a clerk. Okay. For how retired many? Retired 38 and a half years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And you said you made friendships during the service, and you're yeah. still with friends with right. them today. Yeah. Do you have reunions, or do you... No, but they always have a 82nd Airborne week up at Fort Bragg. Okay. Did you, you, know, you right attend more, that? Right before Memorial Day, and... Uh, Memorial Day comes in May or something like that. I think. Is that right? Well, right. anyway, and they and I go up there at times, and I'll uh, uh, we go to my, where my company was, you know, and they have they have uh, the mess hall there, and you eat and oh. meet with guys that's been there before, you know, you mm -hmm. know, you know hmm. like a reunion type thing. Okay. And um, did you join any? Veterans organizations? Or? Yeah, I belong to the 82nd Airborne Association. And okay. uh, I belong to what they call the Static Line, which is for all paratroopers out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh -huh. And that's basically it. Okay. And I'm, I'm Amer American Legion, a uh, member of American Legion here in Rock Hill. Okay. Yeah. okay. Do you do anything with, with those organizations? No. Uh, okay. I never okay. got involved in it that much. Um, did your military experience influence your thinking on sure. war? Sure. Yeah. Good mm -hmm. training. Pardon? Good training. <laughs> it was good training. I, I, you know, I, you think about it. When you go in, you know, you're by yourself. So you're, you're getting paid every month. So you got to watch your money, you know. And you have to kind of hold on to it and everything. And of course, you got to go get your own haircut. you got to do your own washing and... Uh -huh. Or you take it by the, the cleaners, you know, and put a little starch in your fatigues and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. try to look sharp as you can. Thing, polishing your brass and your shoes, and making your bed, and 
things of that sort. So it's uh, it's good training. I, I and I and even when I'm in this uh, while I was in the service, I, one thing I learned is to always uh, go with the uh, with the percentages. You know, mm -hmm. you always go with the percentages. I, so I always felt like it, if you got the percentages, well, you're going to come out in pretty good shape out in the long run. Mm -hmm. Look at look at something that's going on in your life. You know, well, what's the percentage if you do this or you do that? Well, I go with it. when I'm going to come out. I got a pretty good chance that I'm going to come out with a positive influence on something. Okay. So I I, I carry that through all my life. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I try to make that part of it. My decision making. Mm -hmm. So. How about how about your um, did the military influence you about the war in any way or about you. Well, you know, war, nobody likes war, you know, it's mm -hmm. terrible, but it's, that's just exactly, I mean, that's just the way it happens. I mean, you got a, com a country that you live in, mm -hmm. and that's what you need to do, you know. I mean, you, you do what you have to do is the way I feel about it, so mm -hmm. and you got a job to do, just like everybody else. Okay, and, and you felt like that was a good experience for yeah. your life being in the sure. military? And, yeah. Um, is there anything that I would you require that I, I think we ought to have you know, compulsory mm -hmm. uh, uh, military training some way or another is my thoughts mm -hmm. really would help a lot of teenagers mm -hmm. I believe yeah you know. is, there, is there anything you'd like to add that we haven't talked about um, I can't think of anything right off hand no okay so has anybody else in your family gone into the military? Yeah, my brother was in the military, my younger brother. Okay. And he was uh, he was in the Army, too. Okay. But he got attached to the uh, Air Force. And he was up at Frobisher Bay in, in uh, Canada. Mm-hmm. And uh, it got pretty cold up there, I assume. At least that's what he said. But, uh, but see, whenever he was in school, he was taking up uh, machines, machine shop. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did when he was in the service. So him being a machinist, that's why they had him up there at the Air Force Base up there for some reason or other. They need machinists up there. Mm -hmm. Well, John, I'd like to thank you for oh, you're um, welcome. for taking the time to do this. And, right. And well, I appreciate it. It's important. And thank you for your service well, thank to our you country. Again. Okay. Mm -hmm.